So the smash burger versus the steakhouse burger. What one's better? I'm not sure one is better than the other. I think they both serve a purpose and they're both absolutely delicious and really not that hard to pull off at home. So there's a couple of differences that we'll discover along the way, but let's get stuck in and we'll start with a smash burger. Now, smash burgers. Now, like most cooking, you've got to make sure you're completely ready of everything else before you start cooking your beef. So let's run through everything else you're gonna need. Some butter for your bun. This is a milk bun, which work really well. Mayonnaise and yellow mustard. Pickles, dill sour pickles. American cheese, red onion, which we're gonna slice really, really thin on a mandolin. You don't want really big pieces of onion. And then chiffonade lettuce, you want this really fine. And when we put this together, I'll show you why. And that's basically so that you have a, a really nice burger that doesn't fall apart. And the most important part is the beef. Now, you want something around an 80-20 CL, we call it, or fat to lean ratio. Uh, you can even go a bit higher than 80-20. You can go 70-30 if you really want to, or 85-25. But you want a decent amount of fat in there, because that's gonna render out and really flavor the beef. Don't be afraid of just buying good quality mints for this one. We will be mincing our own mints for the Steakhouse Burger, however. But I'll, I'll elaborate more on that in a second. So quite simply, with our beef, we're just gonna roll these into 80 gram balls and then they're good to go. All right, now we've got all our Amazon Plus ready. It's time to cook some burgers. All right, so you are either gonna need a, a griddle or a flat plate like this, or you can do this in a cast iron as well. That's not an issue as well. And then you're gonna need something to smash them with. You can either use a burger smash like this, or even a, a pot will work. You just need something flat with a bit of weight to it. First things first, we wanna toast our bun, because as soon as those burgers are ready, everything else will be good to go. All right, we've got some parchment paper here. We've got our salt ready. We're gonna throw our balls down, parchment paper on top, and smash them out. Season with salt. Time to scrape. You can see that they're almost fully cooked through. So you're really gonna scrape off all that beautiful color from the bottom. Cheese on. Let that cheese mount and we're done. And that's it, we're done. All right, time to assemble. Nicely toasted bun down. A Little bit of mayonnaise on the bottom. Mustard on the top. Now, I always put the salad on the bottom and that stops the bun from getting soggy. Lettuce, sliced onion, all the pickles. <laughs> Meat, cheese, that's it. The smash burger. This is what you're here for. All this really nice crispy edging bit. This stuff's delicious. It's juicy, oh, can't wait to eat it. But before we do, let's make the steakhouse burger so we can compare them. Might have to eat this anyway because this isn't gonna last. Let me take a quick break here. So if you're watching this, chances are you're trying to cook at home more. Obviously, we can't go out for dinner every night. But because of inflation and the economy, grocery prices are skyrocketing all over the world. I wanted to pass along a recommendation I recently saw on James Hoffman's channel. It's a really interesting idea, and it might be helpful if you're looking to potentially grow your savings. It's called Masterworks. See, Masterworks is a fintech platform based in New York City's financial district, which allows you to invest in shares of contemporary art. Think Warhol, Picasso, Banksy. For a fraction of their total value, you can see potential returns in your investment. In the last 12 months, while many other markets have suffered double-digit losses, Masterworks paid out tens of millions to their investors. Just look at those numbers. Now outlets like Wall Street Journal, CNN, and the CNBC are raving about the idea. Act now because inflation is still hovering at a high level and demand is still rising. Over 617,000 people have signed up so far, but my subscribers can claim a free, no obligation account today at the link in my description. A big thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video. So the Steakhouse Burger. Now these are generally kept super simple as far as condiments and for good reason, and that's because the focus is on the beef. We're using really high quality beef, so we don't want to mask it up at all. So we're gonna make a real simple caramelized onion, all we're gonna do is finely slice three brown onions. We're gonna get them into a pot with some salt, with some butter and some olive oil, and we're gonna cook those down real slowly. The slower, the better. Now you can, you can take two hours doing this if you really wanted to. It's gonna keep it on a medium low heat, keep stirring it, and you let them whittle down until they're a beautiful amber golden color. All right, so the Steakhouse Burger, or the Gastropuck Burger, depending where you are in the world. The reason they're so good is because the meat's such good quality. The reason that the meat's usually good quality is because that those type of venues have a lot of trimmings from their premium steaks that they have. Now, it's really hard to replicate that at home, apart from if you just spend money on really good steaks. 
Now, by no means do I expect you to go out and spend crazy money on, on steaks to mince and to burgers, but if you want to, go ahead. But speak to your butcher, see what he's got. If he's got some dry edge trimmings around, if he's got some trimmings of this stuff, explain what you're trying to do, and hopefully he can help you out. So what I'm gonna do is use rib meat. So we'll take the cap off this rib and we'll put that through. And I'm gonna use a Wagyu ribeye. So this is a Carrara uh, pure blood Wagyu ribeye, a really delicious steak. Um, seems a bit sacrilege to put onto a burger, but um, it's gonna be absolutely delicious. Now, grinding your own meat also isn't necessary, but I think it's also a great thing to do because then you know when it's been ground and you can confidently cook this burger to whatever temperature you want. So I can cook this to medium, medium rare, and it won't be an issue. All right, the reason this is so cold is because it's been in the freezer overnight and that just helps with the, uh, the mincing process. You can also, if you can't freeze this or you've forgotten to, you can also freeze down your meat for an hour or so just to get it a bit firmer. And the other thing worth mentioning is that you want this on a coarse grind. You still want to have that real steaky texture. So now we've got our ground meat. We've got a fairly large size ring, slightly bigger than your burger, because it will contract a little bit. And these are big boy burgers. You don't, you don't want, you know, 100 grams. You want 200, 240 grams. So press it in, nice and tight. Don't work the meat too much. We want that really nice, big bits of fat. That's what's gonna make it super, uh, super juicy. And completely fill that ring up and really pat it down. Flip it over and push it out the same way. All right, now here's the trick. Put a divot in the middle, and what that's gonna do is control the shrinkage a little bit. And there we go. There is one sexy looking beef patty. Let's make one more just for good luck, and then we'll get cooking these things. The only other thing is to make sure you keep these in the fridge until they're right at the last second. You want these to kind of, you know, to keep nice and firm before we cook them. All right, onto the bun. Oh, good catch. I didn't touch anything. So you want something more sturdy than a milk bun or a potato roll. So this is a sesame seed bun. It's a bit crustier, uh, still soft in the middle, but we will also toast this as well. So butter, always butter your buns and then we'll toast this. We don't need to toast it quite as quickly as we did with the smash burger because the, this burger patty is gonna take a lot longer to cook. Let's go cook. All right, so we want the divot side down because we're gonna season the, uh, the, the side that's gonna hit the grill first. We are gonna use just a little bit of a high temp oil here just so that we get really nice caramelization. Nice heavy season, there's a lot of meat here so you're not gonna over season it very easily. And then onto a hot grill. We're gonna season the other side. And realistically, these are probably gonna take 10 to 12 minutes to cook. All right, so these bad boys, ooh, they're a bit hotter than I thought. Kind of just over 60. We're gonna get some cheese on there, melt that, and then we can rest them. While that cheese is melting, let's toast our bun. And now our cheese is starting to mount. Time to take these off. All right, so we need to treat these like a steak. So we're gonna rest them. So give them a good four or five minutes just to chill out. And in that time, we can get our bun ready, but it's not that hard. All we're gonna do is put our caramelized onions on the top, our burger on the bottom, good to go. All right, so got our caramelized onions here on the top. Our incredibly juicy patty on the bottom. And that, is a seriously delicious, simple burger. Hmm. But what one's better? Neither, they're both delicious. All right, I'm not gonna try and trick you. This is probably cooked a bit more than I was aiming for. I was aiming for sort of medium rare, like, you know, pulling it off at about 55. Uh, my gas bottle ran out and I had to change and got distracted, but no excuses, it was my fault, I stuffed up. But even still, this is such a juicy and tasty burger. So, smash burger versus steakhouse burger. Try them both out and leave in the comments below what one's your favorite. For me, 
I think it has to go to the Smash Burger. I love the mustard and the, and the, the cheap American cheese. It's just, it's a classic for a reason. Thanks for watching, legends. Subscribe if you're not. Chuck me a like if you took anything from this video, and we'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace.